Ladies and gentlemen, hello, and welcome to Nerdy for 30, the podcast where comedian Tim Keck and I talk about nerdyish things for 30-ish minutes. It's been a minute since we taped one of these. I stumbled on the title of the podcast. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done that before. <laughs> it happens to the I best wasn't of us. Ready. I know. You know what? I wasn't prepared. I wasn't ready. That's the exact same experience I had when I went in to see today's movie, Barbarian. Wow, he's a pro. <laughs> he's a I'm pro. I'm right back. <laughs> he's right I'm back. right back in it. Oh, you thought he was shook. He's not. He's here to play. <laughs> I was shook in the theater. All right, Tim, you <laughs> came in, you texted me and said, I want to get right into Barbarian. Usually we riff, we hang out, we catch up for a while. We are getting right into this tonight. What's got you so fired up? I think we have a lot to talk about. This movie is insane. Right now, right here, if you were listening to this podcast, you haven't seen this movie yet. You're even thinking about seeing this movie. Don't watch anything don't watch a single thing <laughs> don't read a single thing go to the theater and watch it it's fucking awesome right now is your last chance and then i'm getting into oh. spoilers like like 10 seconds from now i'm gonna get into spoilers i'm telling you you don't want to listen to anything we have to say until you see this movie turn it off right now Dude, seriously, I mean, there's, there's somebody right now. listening to this like sprinting from across the house <laughs> like trying to get to the podcast in time because they've got it on a bluetooth they're cleaning their pool you know we got a lot of listeners in socal and you guys are you're you're, you're sprinting across the room you're pushing people out of the way to turn off the pod this is your last chance this movie there's a runner rocks. outside they tripped <laughs> They sent their phone flying, but the AirPods are still connected. They're crawling <laughs> arm over arm to try to get to the iPod to turn this off. Uh, don't look at the cast list on IMDb. Don't. don't watch a trailer. Don't read a synopsis. This is maybe more so than any other movie I've ever seen. Best enjoyed going in completely blind. Have we sufficiently convinced you? I think I, are you, you got still to. with us? So I, I this movie too. This is maybe the most hype I've heard around a movie like this just from social media i had so many friends who were like posting about it like talking about it texting about it like go see this movie don't watch anything go see this movie <laughs> this is like like for, a lot of the posts were like you know if you're one of those people who thinks everything's like a big blockbuster and you're tired of marvel or like all these big budget things and you're saying they aren't making real movies anymore that like push the boundaries of stuff go see barbarian and i went and i watched it and it was awesome kevin Again, giving them a little bit more time to, uh, <laughs> to, to to get to this. I think this is a great time to bring up my hatred of trailers. I'm anti-trailer. Oh, I yeah. was since Here day one. Go. I'll be put in the ground. It'll be a full movie playing above my cemetery. My gravestone <laughs> it will not be a trailer. The uh, I watched the trailer after the fact. The trailer, I would say, ruins the first 30, 40 minutes of the movie. Like, it's a long time because something mm. not go, going in and not knowing anything. I saw a girl get out of a car. She goes up to a house. I had no idea what the fuck was happening. And the trailer really takes you all the way through her going all the way down all of these steps, seeing all of this stuff. They show you everything up until uh, Bill Skarsgård crawling out and scaring her which is like 45 minutes and it's it, it it sucks because that's like the most thrilling 45 minutes of a horror movie i think i've ever watched i was on the edge of my seat the whole time i was anxious i was exciting there's tons of little jump scares there's a bunch of little moments that you're like something big is going to happen and then it doesn't the tension is palpable in these first 45 minutes and if you saw the trailer that was ruined for you and i apologize on behalf of whoever is promoting barbarian because they they should be embarrassed of themselves a fucking atrocity that they even promoted this movie at all. Like, just show it to a couple people and let them let the word get around. Like knowing anything about this movie makes it worse. Kevin, what do you think? That's the paranormal activity way. I remember the fucking hype around paranormal activity. And I think that was 2009 when the first one came out. I was a freshman in college. And the only thing they showed in the trailer was people reacting to the movie. And oh my God, we were in. It was like just... Uh, night vision footage of people reacting to the movie and losing their shit and then like really scary mysterious text that was like it'll scare the piss out of you like, <laughs> don't bring a bladder uh, full of piss into this movie <laughs> <laughs> that piss will be squirting right out of you the second this movie starts <laughs> make sure you piss Witness. at home because <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, witness the movie that movie theater janitors are calling exhausting. <laughs> um, I think we've vamped enough. If you have somehow stuck with us to the point, this point in the podcast, and you haven't seen the movie yet, I'm just going to go ahead and play the outro music and play you out. Thank you so much for listening. It's been a great nine <laughs> minutes with you. We burned a third of this podcast on the trailer. It's time to get into it. Holy fuck. When did you know there was going to be a monster? I had no fucking idea, dude. I had no fucking idea. And I'll tell you what, you just did that outro, like a spoiler free outro. I'd already spoiled too much of the movie just by saying to go down the <laughs> stairs to Bill Starsgard because I had no fucking idea what was going to happen. I was I was questioning everything. I'm like, is Bill the bad guy? Is she the bad guy? Maybe it's maybe she's actually going to get maybe she tricked him. You know, they really play on like yeah. the fact that he's been cast as all these evil villains and Pennywise and all this stuff. So you don't trust him, but just every reveal of like going down the stairs and then she doesn't go. Then she like goes back up and she calls somebody and then she goes down again and then she comes like they like they tease you so much in this movie and it's and it works so well because I had zero idea what was coming and the creature was just I had no idea. I couldn't have seen it coming from miles away. I had no idea what was down there. Nothing. Oh, it was so unbelievably well done. They got me so good with the entire Bill Skarsgård thing because I was completely convinced when he mentioned that he was part of an artist collective. I was like, OK, so this whole thing is that I had seen the trailer. I knew that there was some kind of a tunnel system. And I was like, OK, she's going to get trapped in this tunnel thing. And then the big reveal is going to be that, like, this whole thing was part of some kind of like an art collective thing that went way too far to see what people are willing to do. I was so bored about a movie that I thought I was going to have to sit through for like another hour and a half. And then when that thing comes out of the dark, everything was on the table. Like, oh, my God, Wait, you were, I was so happy you were to see bored it. in the beginning. But you saw the yes, trailer because I saw the trailer. I'm telling you. And so that's it. I knew Skarsgård was there and I knew that there was some kind of a deal where she was like trapped in a tunnel. And I was convinced that we had gotten another person is trapped inside of a house by a psychotic person movie. And I've seen Misery. I've seen Tim Cloverfield Lane. They're both very good movies. But I like a monster in a horror movie. I like a good old fashioned monster. Yes. And I feel like way too many horror movies lately, especially like the A24 Scandinavian horror movies. The premise of all of them is that man is the scariest monster of all, which is true. It's still largely true in this movie. But like I, we got a we got uh, now I feel bad calling this thing a creature or a monster, but we got it's a an creature entity that it's is a monster. Like, unsettling yeah it's the product of oh, generations man. of incest it's it's a freak at this point <laughs> you know there's not, it's not it would, oh, it would just, give some uh some governors of certain states a run for their money i mean this is a dumbass useless pile of shit this creature i mean but you feel bad for it you feel bad for it you do in the end uh, jumping ahead real quick to the the blackout scene in the movie did you feel bad that it got shot i felt kind of bad yeah, you feel bad because there is one there's really one villain in the movie and it's the dad. I would argue Justin Long also. OK, no, yeah, I'm definitely glossing over Justin Long. He is a bad guy. He's a bad piece of shit. But I was thinking about mm -hmm. like as far as um, like a like in the horror movie sense, you know, Sure. It's like there's only one Mike Myers like this. This woman is like the scary thing, but we're not. Ultimately, the protagonist, uh, what's her name in the movie? Tess, Tess Marshall. She um, doesn't really have anything to be afraid of from this creature at the end. Like the creature is kind of trying to take care of her. Like it, it's mm -hmm. it's fucked up and maybe she'd die. <laughs> maybe the creature would kill her anyway. But the creature like loves her in a weird perverted way. So, yeah, that's more empathetic. Whereas the father is just like pure evil, like a black hole of evil, an empty yeah. abyss of evil. Um, Justin Long and Bill Skarsgård are really just like kind of interesting foils for each other. Right. Mm -hmm. Where Bill Skarsgård, uh, I feel like he's doing a lot of things that are like creepy and like kind of giving you this like creepy energy, like whatever. But ultimately, he's a 
as far as we can tell, I think he's a pretty good guy who is just really, really awkward and overanalyzing everything and trying to be as like correct and, and, you know, proper as he can. Whereas Justin Mm -hmm. Long is kind of outwardly presenting like, you know, he's the greatest guy in the world. And then by the end of the movie, you realize this guy is just pure scum. He's such a piece of shit. And uh, I, it was just such an interesting encapsulation of two, I think very real caricatures that we see out in the world today. Yeah, definitely. He, I, the thing with Bill Skarsgård is that he was definitely doing things that in no world would, I think either of us ever do in the same situation where it's like, you got to read the room and know that it's like, don't you don't be fucking offering liquor to this person. Like, don't do anything that is going to make this woman feel uncomfortable. Like just having the situa- the situational awareness of like being trapped in that house and the conditions of being trapped in that house. He's still, he made me uncomfortable because I was like, not buying that he would do that kind of stuff unless he did have ulterior motives. You know what I mean? Mm. Like you got to know that it's like, look, even if you're offering this wine under the best possible circumstances, it's still something that is going to get both of you inebriated. And then it's like, this is awful. Like it's, it's just a situation that a rational person would not want to wander into under those circumstances. I think. I guess, I guess. I mean, there is, he's definitely trying to fuck. Uh, yeah, he, he is smitten with that's her what I'm getting at there. And he's definitely yeah. trying to fuck, uh, the wine thing um, when he lingers in the, the lingering room. in the room is uncomfortable. Mm. It's very uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, but she also seems like really into him, you know, she's like thinking about him. They show lots of moments of her, like seeing him and smiling. And part of the reason why she's so attached to that Airbnb is because she's excited to get back to him. So there Mm. is like real chemistry happening, albeit some awkward moments. And I think you could even interpretate, you know, interpret him lingering by the room as him actually being so genuinely awkward that he creates an awkward situation. I don't know if that's I don't know if I was thinking that initially until I saw Justin Long's character and what a piece of shit he is, which makes me think that Bill Skarsgård really isn't. You know, I think I think they're designed yeah, to like, be opposites of each other. And and I think I feel like I give Bill Skarsgård the benefit of the doubt with the stuff because the wine, I feel like having a glass of wine with a stranger you've never met is like kind of a fine thing to do. But he also knows as like, as I think either of us would know is like, you know, people, people roofie shit and, and mess with drinks and that's creepy. So he's like talking out the dialogue that in this situation, I know I would have in my head of like, okay, I want to provide something for her, but I also need to provide it in a way that I'm not creepy. So then you're talking about it. And now the fact that you've even acknowledged that she needs to see you open the bottle is kind of creepy because you're overanalyzing what should be a basic interaction, but no longer is uh, in today's society because we're so aware now of what, you know, different people are going through in all of these interactions. So I don't know. I feel like he's a little bit of like overanalyzing ultimately decent guy you know compared to justin long's really just like insane you know i don't know narcissist like just a lot he's lying to the world and himself and it's it's crazy it's crazy where i feel like bill snarsgaard is honesty and justin long doesn't tell the truth like in this entire thing oh for sure yeah Yeah. it's interesting the bill skarsgaard over talking thing is exactly what's expected to be endearing about every jesse eisenberg character yes uh so like that same thing is just a flip in this case and maybe it is just because bill skarsgård reads creepy like he just has that air about him you know it's i think it's in the eyes um he does have justin creepy longs eyes. dude justin long for so much of this movie i was like why are they trying to make us sympathize with this guy? Like it's so it's interesting because like the, the protagonist in a horror movie is usually a person that's very vulnerable so that the audience also feels vulnerable in a way that like, we don't necessarily feel vulnerable when we're watching a John wick movie because John wick is like 
He's bulletproof. John Wick's not going to die in a John Wick movie. Come on. Um, but I think part and parcel to that is the fact that it's normally, I mean, there's the horror tradition of the final girl um, and the horror tradition for like slasher movies of being a female protagonist that's tied to some pretty dated projections of like women being stereotypically weaker in situations like that. And uh, having it be Justin Long was weird because it's like, I don't care about this guy as a person. So like Mm. if this thing comes out and attacks him, I'm going to jump because of the scare, but also like he's a piece of shit. <laughs> like, yeah, it's kind of you know what I mean? crazy to me that Tess is so rootable. It's not it's not crazy to me. It makes sense from like a writing standpoint, mm-hmm. but it's still kind of masterful how they pull off every time it looks like Tess is dead. I'm devastated. I'm like, really? Yeah, I root so strongly for her while watching this movie. And I equally root against Justin Long. Did, what did you think of, uh, I guess, Frank or like the, the, the psycho murderer guy? Like, do you oh. at any point wish we'd gotten more of that? Did we get like just enough? I mean, it's gross and disgusting, but as like a bad guy, I feel like I almost wanted something other than he's just like, like I, I want the why, except he's just a fucked up guy you know as much as they flush out every other character it seems like i'm kind of there is just kind of this ambiguous i think i've referenced mike myers a few times but like there's just this guy just this evil entity that is unexplainable and he comes and he does this horrible thing and we see the ramifications of that but i'm still asking kind of like why is this happening why is he doing this what made him this way and we don't get any of that I mean, I think for a lot of these psychopaths that really exist in real life, I, I don't know that there is always a, a solid, understandable why. I think that's part of the fascination that people have with true crime stuff in general is they're just trying to understand why people would ever want to do this sort of thing. Um, Lauren and I were talking about how well done it is. We talk all the time about how there will be stuff in like anime we watch My Hero Academia. I love that show. But there's a lot of stuff in that show where it's just like, why are you doing this? Like the characters are supposed to be in high school and they're drawing them in like really skimpy outfits. And it's like, you really don't have to be doing this. Like, uh, and sometimes there will be like anime shows or whatever that are doing a parody. And as part of that parody, they will show something that's like, again, like a character that's supposed to be in high school in a really skimpy outfit. And the excuse that's kind of implicit there is like, well, because we're doing a parody of it and this stuff's all over the place, but it's like, yeah, but in doing that, you're still putting more of it out there into the world and you're still adding fuel to the fire for people that are interested in this kind of stuff for the wrong reasons. And, uh, I felt that exact way about barbarian. They did it, I guess in the reverse, like they did a very good job of letting you understand the horrific acts that this guy is doing but they don't ever actually show you the acts for the most part. So we don't need to see what's on the videotape. The tape goes in, we see Justin Long's reaction to it. And much like the paranormal activity trailer, we know without having to see that, how horrifying something is that's on this tape. You know, we see a bloody handprint on the wall. We see a bucket. I don't care. There's not a good reason that a bucket's going to be in that room. Um, same thing with like, uh, the actual attack itself that like one of the actual attacks itself where he would ostensibly be doing like a kidnapping or an attack on someone in their home. All we need to see is him going into someone's home under false pretenses and opening up a window latch. We get it. We understand the subtext. And I think the fact that that was used as subtext is like, it's really powerful. And I think the subtext I wanted to talk to you about this is something that can separate a good movie from a bad movie. So like bad dialogue and like really terrible expositional dialogue, there's no subtext whatsoever. It's just text. It's just people not talking like human beings because a lot of what we say in day-to-day life is implicit. And like 
it's something that I think people connect to with prestige dramas like uh, Game of Thrones and The Crown and all that is because it's entirely about power and power dynamic shifting. And all of that is being done through the subtext of what people are saying. So like those shows tend to be really well written. Um, and I think that's one of those things that separates this movie is so much of that is done really well with the subtext throughout the entire thing. I was trying to think of something else like that that I'd seen and just I mean, I guess I, maybe I haven't seen enough movies, but I feel like Jordan Peele was like the last director where I watched something and was like, oh, yeah, there's one that at least in the horror genre, like there's something deeper being said and told here. And I think mm-hmm. this movie belongs up in in like the Jordan Peele tier of like us and uh, uh, get out. I don't think it's nearly as rewatchable as any of those movies. I think even seeing the trailer really makes this movie way, way harder to watch. So I don't think it's going to be I don't know if it's going to get the replay that like those kinds of movies have and like that kind of analysis. But it definitely felt like the writer or the director or, or the people making this movie had strong opinions on the characters, on life, on the world. And I kind of love that. I kind of like seeing a movie that has a, a a point of view. I I like that. I like, I don't know, seeing other opinions, being exposed to thoughts I'd never had. Uh, I think all that stuff's great. I love it. I, I love all the subtext. <laughs> I want more of it. I want more of it in my media. There's too much shit mm. just being handed to you. I mean, as much as we love a lot of like the Marvel stuff, I mean, that's pretty cookie cutter and not challenging in any way. So it's nice to be like, Ken, I don't know if I was really like challenged watching this movie. Like, I don't know if my beliefs were challenged watching this movie, but it was great to see them uh, attack certain things and mm-hmm. explore certain topics. And yeah, maybe there is something too to just like the bad guy or like the dad, the father figure, the, this like predator. I think his name's Frank. Maybe there mm-hmm. is something to Frank just being like an evil, a purely evil entity. Maybe that is like a, you know, a message into itself. And just everyone is kind of dealing with the consequences of this evil entity's actions. And I don't know. It's fucked up. Kevin, how soon are you going to get an Airbnb after this movie? (laughs) Already looking, already booking, man. (laughs) Um, The market is going to be great for a while. (laughs) It's going to. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to be in demand. If you were. So this is like in Detroit. If Hmm. you were looking for an Airbnb with the highest possibility of a sketchy basement, a secret passage. Where are you looking? Are you uh, I was going to say, you know, I'm from Florida. There's not a lot of basements in Florida. I think you're going to find some effed up stuff. But the idea of a secret room in Florida, a little harder to do. I feel like you kind of got to be somewhere where like, you know, the earth is hard where there's basements. Could you find something like that in Boston? You get an Airbnb and are you and you have to make sure you're on like the ground floor too, right? You can't be going up any stairs. They need like a whole Airbnb category. Now they do like lake, lake houses, pool houses, cool pools, mm-hmm. cool views. They need one that's like potential murder mystery passageway. Like it's on the ground floor. It's in a city oh. with with a dense earth that could be <laughs> revealing passages. There's like a couple extra doors that you like just don't really know what's going on. I think they could yeah. really capitalize on this, Kev. Oh, that'd be so funny. I If they steered into it, man, it would be amazing. <laughs> they just have a no Fios option. We stayed at an Airbnb in upstate New York the first time we went to Beacon. That is like, it's the worst sleep I've ever gotten in my entire life because it's like the least safe I've ever felt in a situation. It was like we were in the middle of fucking nowhere out by Mountain Beacon and we'd never been to Beacon before. We did not have a car with us, so we were relying on... Uh, Uber drivers being willing to drive like 25 minutes into a wilderness <laughs> to get to this place and never met the person to this day. I've never met the owner of the place, um, but we had the maids quarters of a bigger house. And one of the big things about it that you noticed when you came in was because it was a maids quarters, it had like a small rudimentary kitchen and then uh, stairs in the back that went up and the sleeping area was lofted. But the stairs, that staircase was the only way in and out of the lofted area. Um, There was a door that could go from the house into the maid's quarters, but the door did not open up the opposite way. So from the maid's quarters, we could not go into the rest of the house. We also could not lock the door. 
So my first order of business upon getting in there was like figuring out how to prop shit up against that door to make sure that nobody could get in there. (laughs) But like we were really in the middle of fucking nowhere, man. And there's not there wasn't like a door that would shut the staircase. Uh, And it was kind of like a hole. It was a very steep staircase. It was kind of like a hole in the ground that you had to go through to get down to the first floor again. And you were trapped up there. So like I just kept feeling like somebody was poking their head up out of that (laughs) hole to watch us and I could not sleep. It was all of the flowers and the wallpaper looked like faces to me. It was awful. You're looking around the room right now. I see you doing it. I am. Well, I have my lights on like a timer. So they dim uh, when it's like sunset and my room's just gradually getting darker as we're filming. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's kind of creeping me out while we're, while we're doing this pod. I do have one Tim, more. Your closet door is open. Don't you dare, Kevin. Don't you dare say anything like that. I couldn't. End. Oh, my God, it is open. Wait, it's always it's always open. <laughs> anything could be in there. There's one last thing I wanted to talk to you about that I was Hit curious me. about, Kevin. OK, so these two people are double booked for the Airbnb, right? Mm-hmm. For the house, right? Justin Long then shows up he's like who's in my house we're like we have no record of them being there the who's booking this airbnb who is circumventing this how big is this kevin that these two people went on airbnb booked it there's no record of anybody being there how does this happen that's a very good question the other thing is um this was part of when I was buying into Bill Skarsgård being the bad guy. He mentions that he's part of an artist collective in the area. If he's got another home in the area and he's just staying at this place for the week to check it out, why doesn't he fucking go home? If it's double booked, go home. You have right. another bed nearby. So that to me was like a massive red flag that we never got to. Hey, dude, we don't know. Maybe the Airbnb is a whole separate grift and like Bill Skarsgård has also been murdering people there. And then finally <laughs> got his comeuppance. There could be a whole prequel to this where a horror movie happens that, you know, uh, what's her name? That I guess Mama would be the name of the, the creature the woman. Yeah, sure. Yeah. There could Mama's be another horror name. movie she's not even a part of. It keeps zooming out. It's like the purge where like the first one takes place in the house and then you zoom yeah. out and you realize there's a whole network of. I don't know. I don't know. I find it hard to believe there'd be a whole network of these kind of incest freaks like all over the world. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. They did. the Maybe the only beef that I have. I'll play the beef theme. Where's the beef? I think the only beef that I have is that the homeless man says that um, there's scarier things in that house than her. And we then cut to Justin Long finding Frank's door. Um, when he goes to the end of the passageway, I think I could be wrong. I'd have to watch it again. I think he turns to the left and sees like a dead end. And so he turns the other direction and goes to Frank's door and Frank's door comprises like the end of the line. Like that, as far as we know, is it for this tunnel system. Franchise potential. Maybe this is a new segment franchise potential. They could have shown another tunnel going somewhere else. Frank didn't have to be the end of the line. Mm. There could be more stuff down there. It takes, it would definitely take it in a different direction. You're thinking with your Netflix brain, Kevin, where it's like, Oh no, the big boss will be visited in the potential uh, sequel. What's it really a trilogy? It's everything's a backdoor trilogy. Like we don't need it. I like that. It's self-contained. I like that. He's the end of the line. You know, it's crazy. I kind of wish that homeless guy had done anything to stop them. <laughs> he's just been there for 15 years watching shit go down. He knows about Frank. He knows he's doing evil shit. Seems kind of weird that he's uh, just hasn't done anything. I don't know. Kevin, you got any other takes? Oh, boy. Um, you know, I think that's it. Uh, yeah. How about you? Any other takes? I feel good. I love this movie. I hope people get to see it. I hope everyone got to see it spoiler free. Uh, If not, I mean, I don't know. You probably had a miserable time for the first hour like Kevin did. But uh, yeah, so that's the podcast, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. Oh, wait, one last thing. Did you know that the director is a former whitest kid, you know? Yes, I heard that today, actually. I uh, don't really know. It doesn't really mean much to me. I don't know much about the whitest kids, you know, but I've seen a couple Uh, sketches. Can't name one. Um, SNL is really the end all be all for sketch comedy for me. I think it's really, yeah. Well, when Rob Schneider's barbarian comes out, we'll be the first to review it. 
Yeah, yeah. The guy who makes the copies. I love that guy. Yeah. Dude, that's like the best sketch I've ever seen in my goddamn that's the, life. That's Frank's catchphrase. Making some copies. <laughs> Making some copies. I love that guy. And we both knew it. He's iconic. Gosh, Rob Schneider can do no wrong. <laughs> protect him at all costs i'm pretty sure he said some very political things i don't know what side he's on but you should keep his mouth shut i don't care what side he's on i don't care i don't care if we share every single belief in the world rob schneider sit your ass down and make another movie where you pretend to be a vegetable or whatever the fuck uh. god damn ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for tuning in stay nerdy stay nerdy bye bye